Hello everyone, welcome to another video. So today I'm just going to be reading the Bible because some stuff has happened and I thought I would go ahead and do it and start a journey. Because we're called to be preaching onto uh, people, to those who are lost. Uh, let's get this started. My microphone not working. I'm sorry. All right, now I hopefully help can hear me now. Right, let's, let's find Romans uh, Bible, Holy Bible. So there's going to be a little to no editing to this, so you're going to see and hear as I speak with the Word of God. All right, here's Romans. <clears throat> but before we start, why don't we uh, pray? So I'm gonna, st I'm gonna try my best on camera because I'm kind of shy. So, dear Lord Jesus, pray that you open my heart and your love. Through the word of God, Holy Bible, read your word. Whoever, whoever may be struggling with their faith, find their own Bible. Humble man, you, Lord Jesus. With the Lord, I pray. So. All right, let's read Romans. Romans 1. <clears throat> Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning in his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be the son of God in power according to the the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all nations, including you, who are called to belong to Jesus. <clears throat> to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, Grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So, this is what the opening verse says. I thought, I thought it would be a good time to uh, say that we are, we are called to be, to belong to Jesus Christ because He's died for our sins loves us he is our creator um it's a good time for us to understand that we all belong to christ whether we accept it or not it's up to us and in this scripture what i understand is that's that's what we are we are called to be belong to jesus because he gave his life for us and also he is also our creator so let's continue on to Romans 1, verse 8. <clears throat> First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his sons, that without ceasing I mention you, always in my prayers, asking that somehow by God, God's will, I may now at last succeed in coming to you for I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you that is 
that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. <clears throat> So we are Gentiles. He's talking talking about us because we are not Jews. Those who are not Jewish are Gentiles. I am under ob obligation both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. So I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. <clears throat> All right, so my understanding of that he just took a letter to the Romans and he wants to preach the gospel to the Romans. He wasn't able to go there, so he wrote, he wrote the letters to him. Yeah, my basic understanding because I was taking my baby steps, <laughs> forgive me. <clears throat> All right, Romans 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. What do you mean by that? Meaning... That we should, as it clearly says, the righteous shall live by faith. So, meaning, our works will never be enough. The righteous people will never have enough work to get into heaven. You can't do that. You can't save yourself. Because it is by faith that we have been saved through Jesus Christ. It is by faith, having in faith that Jesus has died for us and paid for all our sins. He rose three days, three days after. So that's what it just means. It means to have faith in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and yeah, I think that's a very important thing to understand is that we must have faith and not base our lives upon our works for we are not perfect. No one is perfect except the perfect sacrifice which was Jesus Christ. God's wrath unto on unrighteousness. <clears throat> so meaning people who have sinned, people who did not accept Christ, people like atheists or you know others you know those who do not have faith in Jesus Christ those are the unrighteous we are also unrighteous because of our sins we got to remember that but we are made righteous through our faith in Jesus Christ in the eyes of the Lord is perfect he sees us as perfect because of our faith and yet, he still loves everyone. He loves every single one of us. But to those that do not accept, nor receive Jesus Christ, they will have to pay the ultimate price. And I'm preaching the gospel today because it's very important that people know who the, about this because... He has died for us. He has already paid for all our sins. And all it takes is just to have faith in Him. That's an amazing thing. That we understand that we are blessed to have such an amazing God, a loving God. So much so, He sent His one and only Son, His only begotten Son, to die on that cross for us. 
And it's repeated so many times because it's true. Yeah, let's go ahead and go to Romans 1 and 18. <clears throat> For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. But they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. So I basically explained what it said here. I wasn't trying to... I wasn't trying to do that, but <clears throat> so in here, this passage we've we've read through what what God's wrath would be, and who is going to be towards, and it's to those who are unrighteous. What do you mean unrighteous? I thought we were righteous. We are made righteous through our faith in, jo in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That's how we are made righteous, through Christ. His blood cleanses us from all sin. For if we accept that blood, His grac gracious forgiveness and love, we accept that and repent of our sins. We are made righteous with God because... Jesus has paid for that ultimate price. I want you to understand. That is a great blessing. The greatest thing that Jesus has <laughs> Sorry. I'm not going to put this up, but... <laughs> Let's go back to Romans. <laughs> Romans 1, 24. <laughs> Therefore, God gave them up in the lust of their heart to impurity, to the dishonoring of their body among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. So this is about the those people who've given themselves over to the enemy, meaning they've committed sins, lusting. They've been doing what they want to do, but so they're worshiping the the enemy by. Doing all these crazy things like giving into their flesh, for example. That's just in our hearts when we were born. The readiness to sin. Anytime we're gonna, we're just gonna sin all the time because we're human. But we have Jesus guiding us.
if we have Jesus guiding us, um, we'll 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 have a better time getting out of the sin. We'd civilize so we're we're getting through him we can Through him, we can get better at at sinning, but we're still going to sin because we're still human. But one day, when we die, we go to heaven to the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll never sin again after that. No more sin, no more pain, no more, no more death. Where we are given an eternal life. That's amazing. So we're not gonna have these humanly desires after we die. So these humanly desires is what separates us from God. But we're able to have a relationship with him through Jesus Christ for he has already paid for all this sin. He knew no sin and yet he was blamed for every single sin, all of it, all of our sins. Amazing. All right, let's go back to Romans. One in 26. For this reason, <clears throat> God gave them up to honorable passions, for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural, natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another, men committing shameless acts with men and, in re and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. Wait, let's take a moment to digest that. What is a natural relations between man and woman? Well, God says that man and woman were created for each other. The meaning by that is that sex is a gift of God. We're able to have, have sex. And with one woman and one woman only. Same with the... Same with the the other one it is one man so that's the the natural law of things because of God he placed those laws we are no longer living under living under grace so we're given their free will because they're in the creation of God meaning they have their own free will and free thinking they're able to do one but the consequences also follows after what do you mean these sins yeah they're committing like adultery they're having sex outside of marriage they're having orgies they're sexually immoral like gay sex that's how they're doing and that's what's they're saying it's so wrong about or impure in God's eyes because that's what it is. <clears throat> and their ultimate penalty would be death because we would die because of our sin. Um, another thing is that we're, those who do not have Christ Jesus in their heart as their Lord and Savior, believing or having faith in his death for us. Meaning, <clears throat> they're going to die in hell for that. Which is crazy to me. But everyone has their own lives. <clears throat> Let's go back to Romans 1 and 28. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do 
what ought not be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covet covetousness, malice. They were full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malicious, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. <clears throat> they then, though they know God's righteous decree that they that those who practice such things deserve to die, they didn't. They not only do them. I'll give approval to those who practice them. <clears throat> I'm gonna go back a bit. Go from there too. So they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die. They not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. So what? What does this mean? I'm gonna try to break this down. So it means that these people knew about God's righteous, his righteousness, his just, his law, because he is the, the law giver. He gives law. He is the ultimate judge. <clears throat> so they knew that doing this was unrightful to God. This is impure. This is pure anger. This is pure demoralizing stuff. Dehumanizing existence. And yet they wanted they, they loved those who practiced this. They even encouraged doing this. This is crazy. Like they were they were like, yes, you Yes, that's good. Keep doing it. Keep having sex with them or keep keep doing all these things. Like, this is crazy to me. <laughs> like, they knew of God's righteousness, but they did not acknowledge what he would, what he would do to them. I mean, wow. <laughs> that is a lot. Right now we're in Romans 2, verse 1. Therefore you have no excuse, O men, every one of you who judges. For in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself, because you, the judge, practice the very same things. Whoa. Is he calling us a hypocrite? Yes. Paul over here is calling us a hypocrite. Or saying that if we judge people, we're also doing what they're doing. But we're saying onto them that they're bad because they're doing this. But you're also doing that too. The very thing you're judging them on. Alright. Romans 2 verse 2. We know that the judgment of God rightly falls on those who practice such things. Do you suppose, O oh man, you who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is what <clears throat> is meant to lead you to repentance? But because of your hard and impatient heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath, when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. So, this is like a very, uh, very hard thing for me to understand. But let me try to break it down. What does he mean by what is that what? Oh. He 
Do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant, you, meant to lead you to repentance? So what does he mean by that? Like he's, Paul here is asking that, do you think you will escape the judgment of God? when you do such things and you're, you're not repenting you're not changing your ways you're not doing that right so he's asking you are you really are you really of God when you judge others are you really trying to Claim that you're judging others, and you're and you think you're safe from judgment when you pass judgment onto others, and then only bear the amazing gift that is from God. Like I don't it fully and I'm trying to understand it but I'm assuming this is about those who are are like this <clears throat> like the crazy part that they've that they think they're saved and they pass judgment on others those lukewarm Christians those who are just like, you know, God used that for me, and that's all I need. And that or other things, and they're lukewarm in the sense that they do not practice what they preach, and they, they are lazy Christians. They do not do anything for Christ. And they think they're safe from judgment when they judge others. Like, you, they don't have a full relationship with Christ. They don't understand that this is a blessing. Like, repenting. We're able to repent of our sins. We're able to do all this because of God and the righteousness of Christ. And yet, you still pass judgment on to others and thinking you're safe from the, that same judgment. <clears throat> All right. Go back to Romans 2 and 6. He will render to each one of... He will render to each one according to his works. To those who, by patience and well-doing work, well-doing seek for glory, his honor and immorality he will give eternal life but for those who are self-seeking do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness there will be wrath and fury there will be tribulation and distress for every human being who does evil the Jews first and also the Greek but glory and honor and peace for everyone who does good the Jew first, and also the Greek, for God shows no partiality. <clears throat> I think I had to read this part from us. He will render to each one according to works. To those who by patience in well-doing, for doing, seeking, well-doing, seek for good. And honor and give eternal life. Oh, oh, I think I understand. I think I understand. My understanding is so it says, He will render to each one according to his works. To those who, by patience and well doing, seek for glory and honor and immorality. 
it will give eternal life. So for example, what I'm doing right now, I'm seeking God. I'm seeking Him first. I'm trying to find Him first. I'm leading my life to Christ and having a walk with Him. I'm seeking Him, His honor, His love. I'm seeking it actively. I'm one of those. I'm seeking God. So therefore, He gives me eternal life. My faith in Jesus Christ. But to those who practice unrighteousness, those who do not seek God, those who are self-seeking and they do not obey the truth, they will be under God's wrath and fury. So on the day of judgment, when everyone gets judged, they will feel the wrath and fury of God. That is not something I wish anybody to go through. Because it's going to be so bad when it happens. His fury is what many, many people fear. Because, because of the way things are. They, those people who did not accept Christ Jesus... They will suffer, and it's going to be very painful when it happens. Because you're paying for your own sins at that point, and you'll be getting what you sow. You'll reap what you sow. And that is to die in hell, suffer in hell. That's what we all deserve. But the amazing thing is that we can accept Christ now. He wants us now. Now is the time for God to rule our lives. It is now to accept the truth. And the truth is, Jesus had died for us. He's paid for all our sins. And what we need is faith in Christ. <clears throat> Alright, now let's go to Romans 2 and 12. <clears throat> For all who have sinned without the law will also perish without the law, and all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law who will be justified. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do what the law requires, they are a law to themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts, while the conscious also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts accuse or even excuse them. On that day when, according to my gospel, God judges the secret of men by Christ Jesus. But if you call yourself a Jew and rely the law and boast in God, and know his will and approve what is excellent, because you are instructed from the law, and if you are sure that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of children, having in the law of embodiment of knowledge and truth, you then to who teach others, do you not teach yourself while you preach against stealing? Do you steal? You who say that one must not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law dishonor God by breaking the law, for as it is written, the name of God is blasphemed among Gentiles because of you. Wait, let's go back a bit. What does it mean here? Because there's so much to unpack here. Maybe I gotta just stop that. Uh, 12 to 16. So let's do that. Let's go back and read what it said again. For all who have sinned without the law will also perish without the law. I, I myself do not understand what this means, but I'm gonna try my best to break it down and show you what I'm trying. 
learned or and or understand and or doing my best to understand and try really break it down so for all who have sinned without the law who perish without the law so it's with no law you will also know the law and what is the law well the law the law would be god's law in the ten commandments the can the ten commandments are do not steal do not commit adultery do not disobey parents do not lie do not commit adultery idolatry meaning worshiping false idols and those are the things I can only remember because there are ten commandments and I I forgot about it because but again I'm just a human <laughs> alright th I'm not sure about this awkward silence because it only works when I'm in game just do that <clears throat> all right now you can hear pretty much everything the noise gate is basically off now and let's go back and read and all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law so meaning that if you've committed sin under the law you will also be judged by the law and the Ten Commandments as we say if you break one of them you'll go you'll be judged for the very thing you've broken so that's what I understand for it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God but the doers of the law who will be justified so what does that mean I understand this as this so those who are only listening about the law and they do not do what they hear so they're only hearing it like you hear the Ten Commandments and that's all you do you don't do anything about that you just hear it well guess what you're gonna be judged by the laws you've broken but the doers of the law who will be justified so meaning you practice what you preach you practice what you preach so you hear it and then you also do what you hear but the thing is I myself am a hypocrite I'll say that out loud I'll say that out loud I am a hypocrite I may be practice I may be preaching these but sometimes I do not practice what I preach I preach this to myself I preach this to my friends and yet I still commit these laws I break these laws still because I am just human and I have so many desires it's kind of it's kind of hard but this this is it this is what God wants you to do he wants you to say it out loud he wants you to admit to your sins and let and tell him and admit him that means you're showing your your humbleness you're humble you're not proud you're not trying to hide it from God and that's that's what he wants you to do and yet it's kind of hard isn't it because we don't want to admit to our faults our wrongdoings because it just is wrong but we have to humble ourselves enough to say these things out loud and I, I pray that you too will understand that no one's perfect everyone commits sin all the time but God wants you to admit to your faults your wrongdoings to him admit your sins and that will change you your change of mind 
And that's the amazing part. So let's go back a bit and read what we'll be at Beth for. For one Gentiles who do not have the law, by nature do what the law requires, they are a law to themselves, even though the law they do not have the law. It's kind of hard to read this. And I'm trying to be honest and have my own like thoughts and my understanding and I'm trying to preach the gospel <laughs> and it's been 40 minutes so yeah so the Gentiles meaning us those who are not Jewish we are Gentiles so yeah They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts, while their conscience also bears witness. And their conflicting thoughts accuse or even excuse them. On that day, according to my gospel, judge, God judges the secrets of men by Christ Jesus. So, all will be revealed. It says, all of our sins, all of what the wrongdoings we've done as humans. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, He will, He will read all your sins, all of your history, all of your bad things you've committed, and it will be, and it will show God everything we've done wrong. Everyone is going to be judged. Oh wow. I forgot it's Canada Day. Happy Canada Day, but I do not celebrate it, but good for you if you do. It's it's the parade. They're coming up they're coming out of my house. You're gonna hear sirens and blaring and honking. Honk 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 beetle 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 But hopefully if I get closer to the mic you can hear it. Hear me better because I'm trying to do this. So, yeah, that's that's the twelve to the sixteenth. Romans two, twelve through sixteenth. Now let's go to seventeenth. Let's go to the seventeenth and. Into the twenty twentieth. <clears throat> but if you call yourself a Jew and rely on the law in boasting God and know his will and approve what is excellent, because you are instructed from the law, and if you are sure that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of children, having in the law of embodiment the embodiment of knowledge and truth. So Oh this oh this this is about the Jew. Uh Paul talks to the Jew about the hypocrisy. So <clears throat> we gotta continue from there. Again, let's go back. But if you call yourself a Jew and rely on the law and boast in God and know his will and approve what is excellent because you are instructed from the law. And if you are sure that you yourself are a guide to the blind and a light to those who are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of children, having in the law of the embodiment of knowledge and truth, you then who teach others, do you not teach yourself? While you preach against stealing, do you steal? You who say that one must not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You abhor you who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You boast, you who boast in the law dishonor God by breaking the law. For as it is written, the name of the God bless is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. So, this is to those Jews who are hypocrites. Those who have preached about the law, the Ten Commandments. 
he's asking them if if they're practicing what they preach. This is a question we also got to ask ourselves too because it's also very important because if we patch, pass judgment onto others we are also hypocrites we are judging others that's the very same judgment is going to be used on us no matter how big the measurement is and that's what Paul is saying to the Jews and the Romans. Alright, now let's continue on to uh, Romans 2 and 25. For circumcision indeed of is of value if you obey the law, but if you break the law, your circumcision becomes uncircumcision. Okay. So he's he's saying here that um if you are circumcised so if circumcision is indeed a value of you if you obey the law if you break the law you're bre so he's saying the circumcision that you that you have that is a value to you and you obey the law but then if you break the law you are no longer circumcised that circumcision that have value of you to you it is broken because you broke the law if you break one law you broke all the laws it says right here it says right here that very circumcision you got uncircumcised by breaking one law and it's so easy to do that breaking one law is so easy and I, and I hope that you guys understand this. <laughs> it it is kind of a very hard thing to keep up the law, isn't it? So, yeah. All right, let's go back to Romans two twenty six. So, if a man who is uncircumcised keeps their precepts of the law, will not keep will not his uncircumcision be regardless as circumcision then he who is physically uncircumcised but keeps the law will condemn you who have the written code and circumcision but to break the law for no one is a Jew who is merely one outwardly nor in nor is circumcision outward and physical but a Jew is one inwardly and circumcision is a matter of the heart by the Holy Spirit not by the letter his praise is not from man, but from God. So, what Paul is saying here is, those Jews who circumcise, it is not just hourly appearance. It's also within us, within them. It is that. It's not just on the outside that matters. It's also what's on the inside. Are you breaking the law internally? Like you're keeping the secrets to yourself. Are you breaking the law and uh, admitting to it? It is that also. Also on the outside. It's both sides. Not just one or the other. It's both. Outwardly. You may be a Jew. But still, you will be judged. For if you practice the law and break the law, you are no longer circumcised. No matter if you got the circumcision on your birth, the day you became a Jew, whenever, whenever you broke, whenever, your circumcision is gone the moment you break the law. Because that's how it works. Am I saying that you should circumcise yourself every time you break the law? No, that's not what I'm saying. Because it's going to take way too much. The more you circumcise yourself, it's, it's going to be more painful. 
and it's just going to be so many times because you're going to break the rule so many times no matter if you realize it or not all right let's go back and uh Where are we now? We are now in 2 and 28. For no one is a Jew who is merely... Whoa, wait, wait, where do you read this? No one is a Jew. <clears throat> circumcision now, where am I? Inwardly, it's circumcision. So it's a matter of the heart by the spirit, not by the letter. So, Jesus Christ will read all of our hearts. He knows our intentions and our hearts. He knows what's in our heart. Because he can read everything. He knows everything. He is God. Now this is going to be our last um, chapter. Romans chapter 3 verse 1. Then what advantage has the Jew? Or what is the value of circumcision? Much in every way. To begin with, the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. What if some were unfaithful? Does their faithfulness nullify the faithfulness of God? By no means. Let God be true, though every one were a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your words and prevail when you are judged. So Paul is asking, what advantage do you have as a Jew? What is the value of the circumcision? So to begin with, the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. So, in the, so when the Jews were first created through Abraham, I think it was Abraham, uh, his people were the Jews, the first Jews. And he upheld the law. He was given the, the Ten Commandments on the stone and those were the law written by God himself so and he's asking here because you were born into the Jewish life you were brought up as a Jew what advantage do you have over the people who are not Jewish really what do you have outside of what you already are what advantages does it bring to be a Jew are you really different from us? Are you really different from everyone else? You are circumcised, yes, but you've broken the law. Therefore, you are no longer circumcised because you've broken the law. So let's go back to 3 and 3. Romans 3. Verse 3. What if some were unfaithful? Does their unfaithfulness. Does their. Ah, what if some were unfaithful? Does their faithlessness nullify the faithfulness of God? By no means. Let God be true, though everyone were a liar, as it is written. <clears throat> so, over here, he's. Paul's asking. What if some were unfaithful? Does their faithlessness nullify the faithfulness of God? No, that, that's not what it is. Just because we were unfaithful to the Lord, that does not mean He was, He will ever be unfaithful to us. He is a faithful God. That's the amazing part. He's faithful. He's loving. He's trusting. He's very trustworthy. He is the Almighty. Just because we broke our faith with Him, that doesn't mean He broke His faith with us. That's the amazing part. He's a very faithful God. Because of His faithfulness, we've been living under grace, and He's been patient and loving with us all this time. But I say to unto you, my brothers, please, please, Get your life right with God. I say this as a brother in Christ. Your brother in Christ, I ask to you, 
dear viewer, please, please, read the Bible for yourselves. No matter what version it is, if it's New English Standard Version, the King James Version, or read the Bible for yourselves. They are all uh, trans they are translated from the same scriptures. So this is not any different from the New King James Version I have over there. They are not different, yet they have they have the same text scriptures. They're all the same. It's just how it's written. That makes it easier for me to understand because Personally, I, I don't understand Old English very much. It uses words that is kind of outdated and uh, it's kind of hard to uh, really soak in for me. So I read the this version because this version to me is the most understandable and I can understand everything in this. Now let's go back to Romans 3. And five. But if our unrighteousness serves to show the righteousness of God, what shall we say? That God is unrighteous to inflict wrath on us? I speak in a human way. <laughs> it's just that it has a bracket. <laughs> I speak in a human way. Um, where is it? Where is it? All right, a uh, ring finger. I hope you can read it. Uh, can I do it? Come on now. It'd be right here. Come on, focus. Focus. If you can read it, it says right there, I speak in a human way. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's just that's just funny to me because it's just like I speak in a human way out of nowhere. So our unrighteousness serves to show the righteousness of God. What shall we say? That God is unrighteous to inflict wrath on us. So. Oh damn. Let me wave to my brothers. My eye. Uh, all these all these people. I don't want to wave at them this way. Oncoming traffic. Mm, there's a lot of people out there. Gotta love them all. <laughs> They're all loved. And that's that's amazing. But let's get back to let's get back to um, three and five. Paul over here is asking of our unrighteousness. Our that doesn't mean that our unrighteousness is un unrighteously judged by God no that is not what it means like is he is he not right to inflict wrath on us his anger on us <laughs> no no that's not that's not what it means just because we are unrighteous does not mean God is unrighteous for he is the righteous one. He is the one that is true. He is the ultimate one. He is the judge. <clears throat> so essentially what I'm what I'm reading here is that <clears throat> is God just for Inflicting his wrath on their unrighteousness. Yes, God is just. And that is the law. 
Everyone has broken the law. Is he wrong for inflicting his wrath on those who are wrong? Is God unrighteous for doing that? No. No, he is righteous, as I say. He is the righteousness. He under he understands everything. He knows everything. For the let's go back to Romans six. <clears throat> Romans three and six. Whoops. By no means. For then how could God judge the world? But if through my lie God's truth bound abounds to his glory. Why am I being condemned as a sinner? And why not do evil that good may come? As some people slanderously charge us with saying, their, con their condemnation is just. But if through my lie, God's truth abounds to his glory, why am I still being condemned as a sinner? And why not do evil that good may come? And why not do evil that good may come? As some people slanderously charge us with saying, their condemnation is just. So, what I'm reading here is that Paul's saying that those people who blames God for being unmoral, he is wrong for killing us. He is wrong for judging everyone based on their unrighteousness. Because everyone is not right. No one is righteous except God. And Paul says, Paul saying here is that these people who are saying that Oh, my morals are right. My morals are best. My moral is better than God. Therefore, he is wrong. No. No, that's not it. That is not how we live. That is not true. We are unrighteous. But we are made righteous through Jesus Christ. <laughs> so... Yeah, this is what I'm reading, and this is what Paul said, and it's the truth. Now let's go to Romans 3 and 9. What then? Are we Jews any better off? No, not at all. For we have already cha uh, charged... Uh, hold on. So Romans 3 and 9. No one, it sh no one is righteous, it says. What then? Are we Jews any better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged that all both Jews and Greeks are under sin, as it is written. N none is righteous. No, not one. So meaning, no one, not even you or I, anybody, nobody is righteous. No one understands. No, not one. No one. But let's go back to read the whole scripture, then we'll go ahead and go back. None is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good. Not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood, and their paths are ruin and misery. In the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That's, that's quite a lot. Oh, excuse me. So 
it, it's written that no one is righteous. No one. Because our throat is an open grave. We use our tongues to deceive. We use our tongue to slander, to do evil. We say curses. Hey, I, I curse all the time. Like I, I, I like I, 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 I say fuck shit, and all that. <laughs> uh, I say all that, and it's crazy. It's crazy, isn't it? Because I like I, I, I I'm trying my best to not swear. Because it's like that, but I still use my tongue to do all these nasty things. So do you. Everyone does. No, ma no matter who it is, even if it's the most sweetest person you've ever known, the, the most awesome person, the most righteous in your eyes, they're still un unrighteous. They're... They are not it. No. Because they have no fear of God before their eyes. And they are quick to call you out. They are quick to bring you down to their... Like we don't know what the intentions that they have in their words. If we do not read their hearts. Only God does. All right, Romans 3 and 21, let's continue. The righteousness, it says the righteousness. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. No, no, before that, let's go back to Romans 3 and 19. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. Mm -hmm. I am gonna try gonna try to break this down. Uh, so now that we know, now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped. And the whole world may be held accountable to God. So it's, what's being said here is that the whole world, meaning every one of us, will be held, eh, every one of us will be held accountable to God. All of our actions will be held accountable and will be judged because of that. Our actions will be judged by God. <clears throat> For by works of the law, no human being will ever be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. So because of the law, the Ten Commandments, no human being will be justified in his sight. No one will be justified in his eyes. No one will be right in his eyes. Because the knowledge of the law comes the knowledge of sin. And then it all we will start to acknowledge all the wrongdoings we've been doing and damn is it kind of hard to see. It's kind of a it's kind of a big pill to swallow, a hard pill to swallow if you will. But the great thing about this is Romans 3 and 21, it says the righteousness of God through faith. We're going to learn about faith now. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. For all, who, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation 
propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. All right. <clears throat> so every one of us is going to be judged. There is no escape in that. That fact. <laughs> but the amazing thing is we are morally just. We are made just. We are made righteous because of Jesus Christ. Our faith in Jesus Christ is the reason why we are righteous with God. Jesus is the reason why we have a relationship in, with God in the first place. Because he has paid for all sin. All of it. All it takes is to have faith in Jesus Christ. And to those who are who are not understanding this yet, just know it's a journey. And it starts with faith in Jesus Christ, dying for your sins. And from there, your journey begins as a Christian. So we are made righteous because of Jesus Christ and our faith in that fact. In that faith, we are made righteous with God because Jesus has paid for all of our sins. It's amazing. It's amazing, isn't it? All right. Where are we now? We are... Uh, Romans 3 27 then what becomes of our boasting it is excluded by what kind of law by law of work no but by the law of faith for we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law or is God the God of Jews only he is not the God of Gentiles also? Yes, of Gentiles also, since God is one. Who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith? Do we then overthrow the law by his faith? By no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. So, Paul is asking... What becomes of our bragging? What becomes of that? It is excluded. But what kind of law? By a law of works? No. But by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. So the works of the law is upholding the Ten Commandments. Following all that and being righteous and not breaking one rule, not once, ever. And no one has done that ever except Christ Jesus. That's why he knew no sin because he never broke any rule. He never sinned in his life. And yet he was blamed for every single sin on that cross on that day all that sin <laughs> and then Paul's Paul's also asking is it only the Jews who get to have this righteousness through faith no it's also for us the Gentiles God is one meaning everyone Everyone can know God. 
everyone can find Jesus because God is for everyone and everyone was made by God a creation a beautiful creation of God <laughs> for we hold the one that is justified by faith apart from the works of the law or is God the God of Jews only he is he is not the God of Gentiles also? Yes, Gentiles. Who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith? Do we then overthrow the law by his faith? By no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. So, is it our faith that we can start breaking the law? No, 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 no. We still, we still have to follow the law. But when we sin, the amazing part is that we can have a really we can repent we can we can ask the forgiveness from the Lord of our sin we can admit to our own wrongdoings and we are made righteous through Jesus Christ and our faith is what are made righteous with God but that does not mean we should sin like we should act actively do all sin like we should actively find things to do anything wrong no we still gotta hold the Ten Commandments we still gotta love each other we still gotta we still have to we still have to do the laws we just don't have to keep the law. We still have to keep doing it. But we also have to repent of our sins. And I think that's the amazing part. Is that we can repent whenever to God. So, yeah. Let's end this off with a prayer and what you should take away from this. All right, <clears throat> let's pray now. Our Heavenly Father, I pray to you to thank you for sending your only begotten Son to die on that cross for us, to bear all of our sins, and that we may enter heaven through our faith because of you we are made righteous through Jesus Christ who have died for all of our sins and our faith in Jesus thank you Lord Jesus for what you have done for us the gift to the humanity our redemption and our life thank you for giving us a new day and a new mind and a new heart Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all you've given us. You have blessed us with your presence, grace, and love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being a faithful and true God. And that we will continue to live through you and through you and by faith I pray to you that we will continue to live for you and through you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray Amen alright so what did we learn today from Romans chapters 1 through 3 and 3 to 29 yeah we've learned quite a lot and I want you to take away a couple things <laughs> one <coughs> follow follow Jesus Christ what does that mean have faith have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that's the important part 
Number two is to remember that no one is perfect. No one is perfect. Not even you or I or anybody else. No one is perfect. You got to understand that. No matter how hard you try to look away from your wrongdoings, no matter how hard you try to excuse any wrongdoings, no one's done. No one is perfect. That's the other thing we got to understand. And number three is that we will all be judged one day. And one day when we do get judged, we got to be ready. What does it mean? Be ready for that day. For when that day comes, we will all be judged. So right now, any day could happen. The judgments can happen at any day. And now is the best time to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because he's paid for all of our sins. And I hope that one day, when this is all over, I hope that we have a perfect relationship with God. Yeah, thank you everyone so much for uh, spending like an hour with me and uh, yeah, I'll uh, get to it now. Bye everyone. Bye. Love you all. Love you all. Bye.